Hi everyone, Leanne here from Jada Blossom, and I have a quick card to share with you today. I'm using an adorable cl clip art image um, from Dorky Prince and Doodles. The set is called Cactus Animals. I'm also using Jada Blossom Sweet Bunnies, You Are Succulent, our Chevron Stencil, and I'm bringing out the gel press for the first time. So be kind, I've never used this before, I just opened the package, and I'm using Twisted Citron, um, tumble glass and shaded lilac just because these colors seem to go with the little um, clip art piece from dorky prince and doodles now the clip art was cut out of nina solar white uh, 80 pound cardstock um, i printed it using my epson printer and then i cut it out using my gemini machine with a 0.4 border so i'm using this gel press and i literally just put the three inks on and I used the Arranger brayer, and I kind of spread it back and forth, and that's what I got so far. And I first put it on a card base because I want to actually, I think I'm going to just make a card base and leave it as it is, but I end up realizing that that doesn't work too well. So I cut it off, and I'm going to pull in um, a Jada Blossom die a little later in the video. I'll be using my card mat dies. So what I'm trying to do is I'm just picking up some of the ink, I guess smooshing it a bit. I don't mind the lines. And I'm going to add a little bit more ink with the brayer. Like I said, I have no idea what I'm doing. This is a, like a new thing for me. Um, the gel press is brand new. So now I'm pulling out the Chevron stencil from Jada Blossom. And I've got my um, that shaded lilac distress oxide ink. And I've got my um, tailored expressions blending brush. And I'm just going to add a little bit of color uh, in a circle. And I'm just sort of adding that as a little house for my bunny to sit in, like a little placement spot. So this is almost kind of like a, I don't know what this is called, is that, that um, I can't remember what this is called, but basically it's like that, that art with, like mixed media, kind of looks mixed media-ish to me. And that's what I'm going for. As I can tell you, I have no idea what I'm doing. So what I did was, is I layered I put my shaded lilac on the top, I put my tumble glass in the middle, and then I put my citron on the bottom, and then, you know, or whatever, I, like, I had my, my tumble glass in the center to buffer the two colors, and then I just started layering it up, and I went back and forth, and I'm just adding more paint, and I'm seeing, do I like that? No, I don't know if I like that. I have it sitting on my um, Misty, just so I can move it around. But that's what I did. So now I've got my Distress Sprayer from Ranger. And I'm just going to spray some water on. And I'm going to flick some on. And then I will lift it up after it, you know, dr dries a little bit after it sits. I'm using a paper towel just to lift it up. And I'm just kind of getting a speckled kind of background. And I kind of go back and forth with this. And I'm trying to decide what else I'm going to do. I'm going to get this paper towel wet. And then I'm going to pounce through the stencil now just to get some, you know, texture going on in the background. And I'm just trying to make my own pattern in the background, one that I can live with. Because like I said, this is a new thing for me. I've never used this gel press. I literally just took it out of the package. So I'm just sprinkling on some more water here, trying to get a good look, picking up some more of that water with the paper towel. And there we go. And I'm kind of liking it now. It's starting to look a little bit different. So now I'm popping it in my splat box. I got that from Simon Says Stamp. And I'm using Distress Paint in Picket Fence. Now, this is permanent. So be careful. Because wherever it goes, it's going to stay if you don't clean it off right away. So as soon as I was done flicking this background, I went immediately and washed my brush and the acrylic block. And I made sure I didn't get spatter anywhere I didn't want it. That's why I was using this the splat box. And uh, yeah, so I'm just sort of adding some more texture with that uh, distress paint. And like I said before, I have no idea what I'm doing. I have no clue. I'm just trying to make a pleasing background for my piece of clip art from Dorky Prince and Doodles. So it's hilarious. So now I'm pulling out my Marvy heat tool to sort of dry this. And I want to dry that paint because, you know, I'm going to be doing some um, die cutting. I've realized now that I cannot leave this as a card base because, you know, my piece has gotten a little bit warped and uh, wonky. 
So I will trim that and then I'm going to use my card mat die from Jada Blossom to cut out this background. And then I will be, I'll be popping it up with um, some 3M foam tape. When you've got a warped piece of cardstock, I always find your best bet is using foam tape to flatten it out. That's just me. So there we go. I'm just trying to heat it all up and dry it all off. Fun and games with this. But anyways, like I said before, all my die cutting is always done with my Gemini machine. All my um, all my clip art, like when I print out my print out stuff for clip art, I use my Epson printer, and it's an Eco Tank one. I love it so far. And I also use um, my um, my brother Scan and Cut to cut out those clip art images with a 0.4 border. Uh, that's kind of my deal. So now I've got a piece of Limeade Ice Paper Tray Ink cardstock, 4.25 by 11. I'm scoring it at five and a half with my Teflon bone folder using my Martha, Martha Stewart scoreboard. And um, see how warped that is? Yeah. So now I'm pulling out my 3M foam tape and I'm gonna use a lot of it. And I'm just going to make sure that this is all anchored down really well and then it'll, it'll, um, it'll make it flat again. But... Um, you know, you want to be like when things get warped, I just find foam tape is your best bet. I don't know. That's just for me. That's what I've noticed. And like I said, this is the first time I've used this gel plate. Hopefully I'll get a little bit more, um, you know, expertise and I can show you some amazing things. But right now I just wanted to see if I could make it work. And I think I did. It turned out not too bad. So there we are. And I used, like I said, that was paper tray ink white cardstock that I used to do all that inking on. So there is where that little image is going to go. So now I've got that piece of paper tray ink cardstock and I'm just going to swipe my shaded lilac ink pad onto this piece of paper. I've just got my blending uh, brush because I just wanted to smooth it out. And I will get that to dry. And I did with, I drew, dried that with my Marby heat tool. I didn't show it, but I did. And now I'm going to freehand stamp the sentiment. This is from Sweet Bunnies. It says, no bunny is as sweet as you. I'm going to stamp that in the center with Nocturne, VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. There we go. Now you want to make sure that your Distress Oxide ink is dry before you do this. So I'm using Simon Says Stamp Detail Clear Embossing Powder, and it was dry over a coffee filter there. And now I'm going to melt that embossing powder just so it's shiny. I don't know if you noticed, but I used black Secura glaze pen on the eyes and the nose and the mouth and a Secura white jelly roll pen to add some little freckles on the bunnies and highlights. And you know, that's kind of my thing. And there is my three, what's it called? Mini tag dies three. And I just cut out the sentiment with that. Now I'm going to pop up this little bunny on my card base. Super fast and easy. If you want to make a fast card, use some clip art from Dorky Prints and Doodles. Print the size that you want, and then you can just get busy and make a cute little card pretty darn fast. There we are. So now I'm just popping up, making sure everything's equally as popped up as I can get it. People always accuse me, say that I use too much foam tape, but I say better too much than not enough because I hate the thought of my card getting to its destination and for it to be all dented and wonky looking. And you know, I live in Canada, we're talking Canada Post here, and I have no idea what they do with our mail here. It goes through a serious uh, path of destruction sometimes. So you want, you want a lot of foam tape if you live in Canada. There we go. So now I'm gonna pop up this sentiment, and the sentiment will also be on one layer of foam tape. So part of it will be glued to the bunny image and the rest will have the foam tape on it. I'm just trying to lay it across the bottom of this little pot from these adorable little bunny cactuses. Like, how cute are they? I just think they're adorable. I love these little cactuses that look like animals. There's just something, I'm telling you, they're just the cutest thing. They just get me going. Anyway, so there we go. We're going to pop that down. Isn't that cute? Yeah, I just love that. Now I've got my Nouveau Crystal Drops and Simply White. I'm just going to add a little droplet to the center of each of these flowers that are on the bunnies. Like I said before, you always want to zhuzh up your clip art. So now I've got my Fancy Heart Dye from Jada Blossom, and I cut out that Limeade Ice cardstock from uh, Paper Tray Ink using my Gemini. 
and I'm just going to pop out the hearts and I'm going to use a few of those on my card design. I love that there's a bunch of different sizes that you can use. I just find it really handy. So I'm just using my um, EK Success tweezers. I got my pick me up tool there. I'm going to use some st um, Stampin' Up Dimensionals. Those are mini Stampin' Up Dimensionals. And I'm going to pop up some of these hearts. Um, I find that these this color kind of blends in with the Twisted Citron on the background. So it doesn't really stand out too much. And that's what I was going for. I didn't want it to be too busy. Um, but, you know, with it being popped up, it gives it a little bit of texture. And it has the little hearts. So, and you know, I've got, I love my hearts on cards. It's a sickness. So I'm going to pop this one down with my stamp, um, Simon Says Stamp Craft Tacky Glue. Got a little too much there. And then I will add on another one there. But I always try to put on an odd number. That's kind of what I go for. I'm just trying to decide if I want to add any more. There we go. So now on the inside, I'm going to stamp in that Versifying Claire Nocturne ink. Um, it is from the You Are Succulent stamp set. Thanks for sticking by my side. Kind of a play on the cactus. And then I'm going to use the Chevron stencil and just add some of those colors to the bottom of this card base. I'll use the Wilted Violet. And then I'm going to add the Tumbled Glass just a little bit you know, kind of blend it around. It doesn't have to be perfect. I don't want it to be super dark. I just want to, you know, repeat the pattern on the inside. Kind of like adding when I add my pattern paper to the inside of the card. I do also add um, a border die piece, um, you know, just to differentiate from that blending on the bottom of this card. I'm not sure if I have a picture of it for you, um, but I did add a little border die piece to the inside. Now I'm adding some glasses dies. Uh, these are the black, smallest black cat eye glasses. And I'm going to pop them on using art glitter glue. And I have my little EK Success, EK Success reverse tweezers. There we go, can't live without these things. And now I'm going to add some um, glossy accents to those glasses too. There it is. Those little bottles that I got that I filled up with either art glitter glue or glossy accents, those are from Amazon. They aren't fancy bottles or anything. They just have the little needle tips. They're actually pretty cheap, but they're pretty handy because you don't have to squeeze them very hard. I find it hard to squeeze things now. I don't know. It makes my hands sore. So this is a really easily squeezable bottle, if that makes sense. There we go. So how cute is that? I just love these new little cactus animals from Dorky Prints and Doodles. You just can't go wrong. How cute is that? And of course, all the dyes and stamps from Jada Blossom. They're always my favorite. Thank you so much for stopping by, everybody. And I'll see you soon with another video. Bye, everyone.